Hello everybody, I've finished my pink junk journal, so I am left with this box of stuff. So every time I make a journal, I collect a load of things and put them in a box, and then I know that I've got plenty of inspiration to work with. So at the end, sometimes you end up with a load of stuff left in the box. So I thought to use a bit more of it up before I start putting it away into the various locations where the they're supposed to be kept I uh, will make <coughs> excuse me I'll make a loaded envelope to, to use a bit of it up and then I can put that on the shop if if I decide to, to do that right so I'm actually gonna make some more mess <laughs> by using some papers I've got these but I can't really I think this is a bit too vibrant for what I'm looking for but then this pink is not quite the right shade it goes I suppose it does go with the kit doesn't it when I see these then it does go because we've got these sort of peachy pink tones in the roses but it doesn't go with that one and I think that one is a bit too dark um we've also got this pad of eight by eight so maybe i could use this as a base let's see what we've got in here quite like that one all the pink ones are on the top right we'll take a piece of that out Pink polka dot. And then this lacy one. I kind of want that peach involved now that I've seen those roses. No, <clears throat> I'm going to play it safe. Get rid of those. And you can go in the pile of mess that's beside me on the floor. Right, so these are going to be my base. And I want to cut them down so that they will fit in a general journal that I would make. Which is uh, generally the pages of 15 centimetres by 21 centimetres. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut them down to make that size. I'm going to try and use this side. So we want that 15 centimetres. Fifteen by, so it's by 20. So that will fit in fine inside a journal. If I can just get that one back in to show you. Because when I use up a loaded envelope, I sometimes just bind them together with like a piece of fabric or something and have two so that they can be used in signatures. So that means that that would fit in a signature just fine. <clears throat> so that's the front. And that, then I'll cut the back as well. Actually, I'm going to have that as the back and you'll see what I do with the design because most of this one is going to be covered up so that's why I'm choosing the plain one to go on there. Okay, so we're going to make our first pocket of the envelope by cutting out a thumbtack. Uh, what do you call them? A thumb dent or whatever it is that you want to call it. And then I'm going to round the corners of them together. And then they need inking up. It would look really nice as, just as it is, as a nice like fresh piece. But because I've got lots of these distressed ones I'm going to be using them so I want to make sure that they 
are also looking a bit grungy and old. So then we're going to stick them together and I just want to ink that tab area as well. So we're going to ink one, two, three edges. Uh, not sorry, glue, not ink. <laughs> Getting obsessed with inking. Just see if I can unblock that. I'm getting quite low on my tacky glue and I want some of that glue that I see everybody using with the sort of pastel coloured label and the metal tip and the little pin that you stick inside and I don't know what it's called and where's the best place to get it so if you know please let me know um, I think I'll, I'll still use tacky glue because I, I have that in my shop and I, it, it's good for large areas but it's just for the um, for the more detailed work, I want to get some of that glue, whatever you call it. So line them up as well as we can. So that's the back, that's the front. And I'm going to work on the back first of all, and I want to put a side loading pocket down here which is roughly half of the size. So that was 15 centimetres wide. Sorry, I should be doing inches for you as well. Uh, oh, five and three quarters. Five and three quarter inches, something around that mark. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't very well done. So I'm just looking at my um, off cuts looking for something to make a pocket down here but the thing is most of these have been cut horizontally so I need a non-directional pattern quite like that it's a bit too vibrant how about a plain pale pink no um, or I could fetch that book back in, but that's not really using up my scraps, is it? Which is the whole point of the video. <laughs> so, oh. no. I was almost convinced, but I think it's just a bit too dark and dingy for this nice bright pocket. There's that stripe again. I'm going to put some lace on it as well, I think. Do you think we can get away with this one? It's got like a an upwards pattern. Can we make it sideways? No. Something plainer. It's in the reverse of there. These muted roses, that's not too bad. It's not exactly what you aim for, is it? Not bad. You want, you want good. But I think once that's inked up, that's going to look quite nice actually. Right. So, I'm going to do half of the. Um, the width of this so eight and, eight and a half sorry I just had a total mental blank what I'm gonna, can you see that that edge is torn and I want to keep that torn edge so we'll measure it from the other side Eight and a half centimetres or three and... Um, see my problem is when I'm trying to translate into inches I don't know what how to name <laughs> these so it's like 
almost three eighths, three and three eighths ish. I don't think you really care about the measurements, do you? You just kind of watch what I'm doing and you can just adjust it to whatever size you want to make it really. How high was it again? 20, 22 centimetres. Not 22 centimetres. Oh man, Rachel, just shut up. We don't need to worry about sizes, just do it. And then we're going to use the corner rounder to make it match up. I'm now thinking that maybe half is a bit too much and I want it more of a third. Yeah, so just chop a bit more off. Just until it looks right, rather than worrying about those measurements. Maybe a little bit too small now. <laughs> Oh, just decide, Rachel, and get on with it. There. So in my last Craft With Me video, I was mentioning that I wanted to um, set up my son's advent calendar with different activities for Christmas. So thank you to Jane Esteban who recommended doing a treasure hunt and I thought that was such a good idea, like a Christmas treasure hunt. And what I thought I would do is make it like an outdoors one and it's a good way to go and have a look at the Christmas lights and stuff like that because we'll be able to um, so, for example, if I say go and find um, a house with a snowman decoration, then we would be able to go out for a hunt. Obviously, I'll like I'll research it to know that there's things in the area that we can find, and then I'll take him out on a nice frosty night and go exploring to find some different things. So, thank you, Jane, for that idea. It was cool. Right, let's have a look at some decorations and things. What I sometimes like to do with these as well is have decorations and I'll just stick them very slightly on so that you can easily pull them off and use them in your own journals. Sometimes I stick things really well but you know not all the time. So right, we'll just get on with the basic construction for now. Okay, so this is the point where I can use these strips because I'm going to make horizontal pockets and I think what I'll do, that one's too bold, what I'll do is um, layer three pockets so that they look something like that. Maybe four, maybe I could add another small one at the bottom. Not this, but I'm just thinking like another pinky coloured one down there. Right, so we need those to be matching the width. So I want a rosy one there. Then let's find another one. Oops. So if all else fails, I can just use the same as that one so that it's got plenty of um of the rose theme in there. It's quite pretty. I wonder if I swap those.
No, that wasn't the right way, was it? We had that one at the top. Oh, I like that. Yeah, because I think that kind of brown tone works well as a contrast. Because with these things, sometimes it's, it can get easy to to make everything a bit too samey. So it's good to have another colour that will just uh, just give your eyes something different to focus on. So if that's there like that, that's there like that. That one can go right down to the bottom. And that one goes somewhere around there. Does that look a bit unbalanced? Yeah, I need that higher. Make that 15 wide again. Could just trim it down afterwards, of course. Right, I'm hoping this is it. The right combination. So we just need to get them looking pretty even. Okay, so these need inking. I'm just going to do them all the way around so that I can play around with the um, the direction of it. And I don't have to worry about which one is on the bottom, etc. say that if you don't have an inking mat then you haven't experienced how easy it can be to ink. I'll link one down below so that you can see what I, what I use. Uh, just because it can be a bit um, it can be a bit hard to get a glide and motion going. So I do like to use one of those tools. Right I want this one glued up here and all I'm gonna um, no, what I'm going to do is glue three edges for this so that anything that goes down there isn't going to fall right to the bottom and get lost. Um, because I don't plan to put anything majorly big. Anything that is large can go in that back pocket and it will reach down quite far. So the first pocket is going to be glued on like this. Somewhere around that mark. And the problem is when you use stripes, like that polka dot stripe, you can see when it's wonky, so it takes a bit more concentration to get it straight. I can see that looks nice already. And the next one was this. So this is the tricky one. Let's just round those corners because I know that that's definitely going right to the bottom. So if I can match those up and then that will just help me to gauge where to put this one. So I think, just a bit lower down, that looks about right. So if I just line that up and then I'll know where to put it. And again I'm going to do three edges. One, two. 
quite like where that's a bit dog eared. Now, what I'll do, I'll stick it first. Again, try and get it straight. Then I'm going to tear to one side. Because I know that it's got a nice pattern on the back. So I'll tear that and then fold that over as well. And then I'm just going to get my ink and tool in and just give that a little bit of detailing with the tool. white crevice there and then I'm going to glue those down with a little spot and then weigh them down with something while they dry need something heavier than that This is my old tape dispenser, which is broken, but it's such a good weight that I keep it to one side in case I need it. And now this is going to be glued at the bottom. I keep getting the shakes. And I'm squeezing the glue. Let me see that. I can feel myself shaking. Right. And then that's going to go on the bottom. It's harder to line up all of the edges when you can't stand it up on end. But that looks about right to me. Right, while that's drying, I'm just going to go and um, have a look for some lace in my drawers. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so that should hold those down. I just got this, um, so this is in my box. And it was a bookmark blank. I sell these in the shop if you want some. Um, and I'm just going to cut this lady's head out. <laughs> um, roughly. And she is going to go in the window. And then I want to cut this down as well. So I'm just going to cut that about there. Try and do a straighter job. That's even worse. I'll end up with one left. Right, so we're just making kind of a little um, bookmark to, to go in one of the pockets now. So let's... These can be folded either way. I don't know why I folded it the unnatural way, because the natural way would be like that. But just add a bit of ink around all edges. lady in so this is just a scan from a photograph and it's an old one so it'll be out of copyright I'm hoping so I don't really understand how it all works it's easier to understand the, the, the way the American system works than it is to understand the way the English system for copyright materials works.
Let's try and hold that down because it is quite thick card. And then what I thought I would do is just pop some of this netting over the top, although I might hate that if I can't see your face. Um, what we could do is cover it over and then cut out the aperture for a face. Just get some of that where the design's going to show through. Glue that down over the top and then I can just cut with my tiny scissors her face. Um, well not her face but cut the uh, I'm going to move that out because I'm going to end up cutting it if I leave it there. So that's about central to me. We'll have to trim this afterwards. So anyway, that's basically the, the bare bones of the envelope made. So you've got a pocket in the back one, two, three, four pockets at the front and then you can just fill it with lots of goodies. So I'll, I'll do some goodies now um, and then I can finish it off later and I will put it in the shop eventually. And I'll make a post so that you know it's available if you want to get your hands on it. I like them because I just think that it's a good way to get some different bits and pieces that you don't already own into your journal. So I'm going to lightly glue the fabric over. With it being netting I don't want to go overkill with the glue. That can go straight on top. And I can just trim those out. May have to re-stick afterwards. I love these scissors for detailed work. They're very good at getting into small spaces and they're really sharp. I mean they've lost a bit of the sharpness since I've been using them. They're good for fussy cutting. Yeah, I've done that quite well as well so I can use that for something. <laughs> it's not as central as I'd hoped it would be but the flower I mean if it was a bit more central then I could have definitely used it as an emblem on something. That's just made a pretty overlay. Needs some ink, I think, to make sure it coordinates with the backing because the backing is inked. Just get those little threads off, like so. Right, just a light dusting of ink over those. So it all looks like part of the same piece. Then I'm also going to cut this hole. Although you could already get a thread through there. But I just want to make everything about it look intentional. So there we go. My trusty ball of jute twine. Give us a pretty tag. And then I've got some tiny balls in here. Can I stick a tiny ball? 
there. I think that looks fine. Tiny dab of glue. In there. Okay. And then the back is left blank to be used as journal and space. See, if I had that glue I was talking about, I could poke the nozzle in there to seal it up. All right, and then I'm gonna set that to one side under my tape dispenser. I found these pieces. Now I'm gonna use some of that to decorate this pocket a bit. Let's have a try and see which one looks nicest. So this is vintage lace, and I can't remember where I got it from. I think it was from an Etsy shop um, that I mentioned in my previous videos. What was it called? No, I can't remember. It might not have been from there anyway, so I don't link them or anything like that in case they're like, what, you didn't get that from us? <laughs> but it's really pretty and that one works quite well. And then I got this from the little quilt shop, which is Broadway Anglaise. I think that's a bit too clean cut, that one. And I think this is going to be too chunky. Yeah, so we'll use that delicate um, vintage lace to go make sure you get it going the right way so if I just chop that roughly that'll make it easier to position um, right going to glue Again, we're using a light application of glue and I'm going to use heavier towards this edge. And again, this will probably be fine to pull off and use in something else once you receive it. So I've left that torn edge on the paper up there on purpose. And I've just set it away slightly. And then we can trim that down to measure to meet the uh, the height of it of the pocket. On there. it up a level of prettiness right so I've got some bits here this is um, a postcard that's been dyed with tea it's very thin well not very thin but for a postcard it's thin so I like to put some bigger pieces in that pocket in fact I think that one can go in that back pocket because then it's going to give us that interesting topping you see that where it's been torn out of a notepad and that just adds another visual clue as to what's inside um where am i going to put the butterfly we'll go symmetrical on the front since the back isn't Symmetrical. I 
And these were from the range, I think. It's really pretty. I want to get some more actually because I've used them all up now. So that can just be a little focal point at the front there. I did have some paper clips. Have we got any left? Got a little metal butterfly there and a brad. I think that will be too big for the butterfly. So you can attach things. There's just a little tag that can go straight in. Well, with a bit of a bit of ink and a string. Paper clips. We've got pinky colours in that one. Another button. Another little brad. Um, string we need for this. That's what I'm looking for at the minute. Some sort of string pull. ribbon let's just loosen the box I like some variety with my string pulls oh didn't do that very well let's try again fold it walk it through make a hole and through the end score. That's it, and then can just go in a pocket. And we've got this one here. Um, how can we make this more interesting? Got some tiny people, so shall we make this? Um, I just need a scrap. Try and get that rose in. It's going to be far. Let's try that again. Just make that rounded. No. More diagonal. That's it, because I definitely wanted some of the pink in there. And then all I'm going to do is line that up as best that I can down one side. And then I can use my little scissors to clip around. I think I've actually cut the tag itself there, but never mind. It's a bit wonky, but... worry okay and then I was thinking I can stick the little people in but how about the gentleman inside no. I'm just gonna poke them out like that <laughs> it might look a bit random but I think that as well sides. Oh, I didn't notice the back design. The back design would have been more pink, wouldn't it? Never mind. Okay. That goes on top to make a little pocket. And do we need another one? Going the opposite way. I think we do. So I'm just going to do a similar thing. Thank you. 
by the time you've got your ink on the edge it'll contrast enough to see where the pocket is ink around the bottom so that they don't fall out I say I've seen it again I keep saying ink ink I'm obsessed with ink don't need to be Get it at the right angle so that it lines up. And then my people go in there, and then they can be used elsewhere if you want. And what I think I'll do, I was considering just making that dangle from the string. Um, let's get some embroidery floss. So I've just got this um, twine stuff. I might not be able to fit it in. I wonder if I can separate those out. Oh yeah. It's, it's strange stuff this. It's like um, as if it's made out of paper. I, d I don't know what it is to be honest. But I'm just going to make it one ply. Then I can thread it through, hopefully, the butterfly's hoop. I might be doing this wrong. Feed it through the loop. Is it going to keep the butterfly in the right space? That is the question. Come on! Oh no! It's all falling apart. Mm, it's flipped him to the wrong side, hasn't it? He's back to front, but you get the general idea of what I'm doing here. Yes, I just wanted him to dangle off. I don't think that's going anywhere anywhere anytime soon. What happens if I twist? I'm going to try and twist the whole thing. But I don't think it matters. It's Okay, like that. There we go. So there's a little tag that can go in one of the pockets. So we're making a bit of progress. So I've got these circle journal cards that came with the the pack. I can't remember what it's called now. If I can find it, I'll link it down below. It's a Stamperia collection. So probably I've put that a bit neater, but actually it's turned out okay. Get those edges inked up. simple decoration to go inside and we're just going to layer them as much as we can and stuff it and stuff it and stuff it. See if we've got anything else nearby that I can make into a quick piece to go in. Oh I forgot that I'd done that actually. Where's me? 
my journal card thing, bookmark. I cut out this word and thought we could just pop a little title on it and cherish. These were just some words that I made myself and printed off. I'll put that up the top. that okay so you get the idea and I hope you'll give it a try because it's it's really fun let's just zoom out a bit it's really fun to make something like this and then send it to a friend or just keep it for inspiration for yourself um things like this <laughs> it sounds a bit strange because what i like to do is make myself little presents for the future and hide them away <laughs> and then you can find them again in the future and then it will be inspiring because you will no longer have those pieces and it'll just give you something else to add maybe that's a bit weird but that's what i sometimes do and then adding things like paper clips as well it doesn't have to all go in the pockets and then you can clip things to the to the front if you want so you can have something clipped under there and then use the full potential of the space i think i might need to stick that down okay thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you again bye